Um, today I'm just going to show you how to um, how to put on a string if you uh, if you either need to just restring your violin from the old strings or you've inherited a violin that doesn't have any strings on or or you've broken one that kind of thing. So today I'm going to show you how to do that. Now the first thing I would suggest, a um, little bit of a kind of warning I suppose, never take all of the strings off the violin always do them one at a time i mean if you don't if you if you've got a violin that doesn't have any strings on then obviously that's fine there's nothing you can do about that but if you either want to change a whole set of strings for example i would very strongly suggest that you take off your old string and put on a new one and do it one at a time don't take off all of the old strings and leave yourself with nothing on the violin the reason being is if you on your obviously I don't think you'll be able to see this on the camera here, but if you sort of had a look through through the little F hole, the little sound hole, just directly underneath the bridge, you can see like a little pole. It's called the sound post. That's directly underneath the bridge. Now it it does play some part in kind of supporting the bridge and supporting the violin as well. So if you took all of the strings off, you imagine that you've got no pressure holding the bridge down because the bridge is not glued onto the violin at all. So if you took the strings, if you took all four strings away, you could release some pressure which would cause the sound post to collapse and then you're looking at a very expensive trip to the violin makers to try and get the sound post put back in again. So never remove all four strings at the same time. If you do need to replace them, take one off, replace it. Take the next one off and replace it. So today I've taken off, I wouldn't normally do this, but I'm just doing this for the purpose of today's video. So I've removed the G string on my violin, just because for the video it'll just be easy for me to put back on. Um, I didn't remove the E string for the example because it's a very precarious string, so it's, it's very thin. Um, and the more I play around with it, putting it on, taking it off, putting it on again, I don't want to break my string. Um, so I've got a set of parastros on, on here. Um, Eva Parazzi strings. So obviously I don't want to be playing around with them too much. So the first thing that I would say that you need to do, unravel your string and then you see that you've got this end here. I don't know if you can you can see that perhaps clearly enough. So that end, the ball end of the string, is what you want to put into your tail piece. So I don't have any tuners here, I've only got one here. If you did have a tuner, and it looked like this, you would just put the ball in, in the tuner here. So if you had, a t if you had um, one of these fine tuners and it was coming out of this part here, then you would just put, just put the ball in the tuner. It's, it's very, very self-explanatory and also you can see how the other ones are done anyway if you can't quite work that out. So what I'm going to do is so if you could just see this, just put it in, just put the just put the ball through the bigger part of the hole and just move the string up. Okay. So perhaps I can just do that again. So put it into the, the bigger part, push the string, push the string up and then pull the string so it's now being held by the little ball. Okay. And then I'm going to put it into the little gap that you have on the bridge there. There should be like a little kind of groove in the bridge where the G string has been. Holding it taut, okay. Now this is easier if you've got somebody else to hold the string for you. So what you need to do is with, I, I'm right handed, so I hold the string with my left hand thumb. So what ha what that does is, is is keep this area all nice and taut. If I let go, all this would become slack and it would the little ball end would come out of here. So I've pulled it all tight and I'm just holding it with my left hand thumb in sort of place. It doesn't have to be tight, but just enough so um, you don't have too much slack down this bit here. The next thing I'm going to do is just grab the very end of the wire while still holding it with my left hand thumb. And what I'm going to do is, this is very difficult guys, trying to do this in front of the camera for you, but I'm going to try my best. <laughs> so you should see a little hole in the peg that you need to put this into. I don't know if you'll be able to see this or not, 
I'm going to do that now. So I'm just going to find, I'm going to twist the peg until I find the little hole that it has to go into. And just push it through until I can see, I don't know if you can actually see that or not, until you can see the wire. Can you see it just poking out maybe about, I don't know, half a centimetre, if that? Okay, once you've done that, what I'm going to do is pull it, pull the string, have the string to the side, and then I'm going to start winding. But as you can see, I'm pulling it to the left. I'm pulling the string to the left all the time as I'm winding in. I Now, I'm not pushing the peg in at all. I'm just winding the string in, basically until I get rid of the coloured part of the string here, all the while keeping it to the left. Now, once you've done that, just make sure that little that slips in there. Now, this is nowhere near in tune. It's still very badly out of tune. But as I was pulling, as I was pulling the string to the left here, it means that the strings are neatly wound, the, or the coloured part of the string is all neatly wound in. So you can see the pink is all is as close to the peg as it can be. The other one at the top is as well. I think the string is too dark for you to see, but this this sort of uh, this green one here is to that side of the peg, so wherever the peg is it needs to be, so if, if you're using this peg, the coloured part of the string, or you need to pull the string close to this peg, otherwise you find that it's it's all wound really unneatly. When you go to tune the violin as well, all the other bits of the strings are touching all the other pegs and it's just a nightmare to tune. So once you've done that, what I would then do is very carefully just twist the peg as I was tuning that violin I was doing it very very carefully um, now what you would need to do is find yourself a G um, on, on a piano um, or one of those little tuners that you've got find the note of G um, and then just gradually very carefully keep tuning so you don't want to be yanking the peg, peg too much because I've said that in one of my other videos before if I just loosen it slightly for you so that's clearly not in tune I need to hit a G plucking the string. Can you see how slowly the peg is moving? You know where it's got to go. La. And it's nowhere near it, so I know how far it's got to go. So I'm not just going to yank the peg to try and get there because I'm going to break the string. If I did that with the E string, I would break it and then it would cost a lot of money to go and buy a whole new string. So I'm doing it very, very slowly and very carefully. The whole key to tuning is slowly otherwise you will break your strings there's no hurry to get there just about in tune so what I would do now is, is grab my bow and I would play that um, and that would give me an even better tune and I'd just tune it again with the pegs as you're as you're moving the peg you might hear the violin make these little kind of click sounds that's fine all it is is just the pressure on the bridge um, it's just the pressure on the peg and everything don't be alarmed by it what you can do is just make sure that your your bridge stays completely straight all the way through as you're tuning. So you could do a little bit of a tune, just check the bridge, tune it again, just check the bridge. So on some violins, the bridge can collapse if you've tuned it too much. So you can just keep a little eye, tune a bit more, check the bridge, tune a little bit more, and you'll be absolutely fine. So hopefully you won't be breaking any more strings. <laughs> um, but yeah, just, just be very careful um, with them because you don't want to break them. Um, thanks very much for watching, and don't forget to catch me on my other videos. Oh,